How do YouTube? It's Conrad again, and today we're going to bring you some more Open Legends content. Today we're going to discuss the topics of player GM trust and what that really means. Now, in most systems, the big ones being D&D and Pathfinder, there is not a lot of what I refer to as player GM trust. Um, and, and that is in terms of mechanics, right? Um, Pathfinder has a lot of rules. You can be a lot of different things in Pathfinder, right? You can range anywhere from a, a simple fighter to a bomb flowing, throwing, oh man, throwing alchemist, to a spellcasting wizard, to a ninja, to a psychic. But within those archetypes and within the archetypes within those class, you are very limited in what you are allowed to do. Um, for example, a wizard cannot cast clerical spells. Um, a cleric cannot wield a greatsword, typically. I mean, sometimes you can if you take the right domains. Um, in Dungeons and Dragons, um, wizards cannot wear armor, right? Um, these are hard-lined, hard-wired rules in order to maintain balance within the game. Uh, think for a moment, if you were able to be a fifth-level wizard wearing full plate and throwing fireballs and wielding a great sword and healing your allies left and right without any need for spell slots, all right? We are used to this level of restriction as players and as GMs, which is one of the reasons why when somebody else brings a homebrew idea to us, we are initially skeptical. We don't have the trust that this person is going for balance, that they are having our game's best interest at heart, okay? Um, and in Open Legend, this system flips that on its head, right? Um, this game is entirely about player slash GM trust. Um, the core mechanics of twisted success or success with a twist and failing forward or fail if the story progresses entirely rely on players and GMs trusting each other to tell a story and not screw over their NPCs or PC characters, right? Um, one of the things that I hear a lot of in the Discord server is, um, well, how do I prevent a player when I'm playing a fantasy game? Let's say I want to do a D&D &D conversion to Open Legends, and you say, Conrad, that they can play anything they want, and they want to play a cyborg Jedi psychic. I don't want that in my game. That doesn't fit what I'm trying to tell. And as well, it shouldn't. That is a trust that a GM has to extend to a player and say, hey, I would like to say, I want to tell this story with you. Within this story are certain parameters that need to be met. Um, for example, we're not doing laser guns. I trust you as a player to not throw laser guns in the middle of my goblin infested dungeon. On reverse, let's say you're playing a modern game. I as the GM say, there's no magic. I'm trusting that you as a player are not going to make or try to enforce against me a, a magic fireball throwing teenager. The rules allow it but we have to have that level of trust in order to tell the story we want to play, right? Um, most, set, most games, um, when you do homebrew stuff, it's hard to maintain balance. It's one of the reasons why we don't like it. And I keep coming back to homebrew because it's where all that trust needs to be, right? We don't trust each other, typically, to not make an overpowered, or broken character. Um, and most systems account for that. They don't allow you to do it. It's not in the rules, therefore you can't do it. Um, it's one of the reasons why GM's Guild for Dungeons and Dragons is doing so well, um, is because people want homebrew options. And we're not, as at this point, a lot of people are not super happy with being confined to a set stricture of rules and that's fine if you really like a lot of rules great if you don't like a lot of rules great um, player GM trust also extends 
to storytelling. If I come to your table and you are my game master, I trust that anything that I bring to the table will go through the filter that is you. Now, what I want to have fun may not necessarily be fun for anybody else. And if my fun takes away from everybody else's fun, my fun has to come second. As a player, I trust you as a GM to have that same baseline for everybody else. And you as a GM are trusting me as a player to not screw with your game. Okay? And if you're another player at my table and I'm gaming with you, you are trusting me from player to player that we aren't going to try to screw each other's night up or day up or whatever we're doing. Um, so, in Open Legend, it comes down really to common sense. Okay. And in the Discord servers, we, we say that a lot. Okay, on the Discord server that if it makes sense, you can do it. If it doesn't make sense, don't do it, right? Don't allow for things if you're the game master. Don't try to push for things if you're the player, right? If in your world there's no dinosaurs and you as a player try to come to the table with a dino rider with, you know, mini guns on his head and rocket launchers on his back, as the GM get a look at you and say, uh, really, dude? Uh, that doesn't make any sense, Right? take the inverse let's say we're playing in a, in a world of eberron right and in eberron halflings ride dinosaurs if they're on the talenta plains now let's say i want to make a beastmaster kind of character and i come to the table with my naturally made character you know i, I say that i'm short um i've got a hot temper uh i wear light armor and i'm riding a velociraptor now we're in Eberron, and we're based around the Talentia Plains. And you, as a GM, look at me and go, "Really, dude? We're not doing we're not doing dinosaurs this time around." I can look at you as a player and say, "Hey, it makes sense for the world that I'm in. Trust me on this. I'm not going to screw with your game. I just want to play a dinosaur riding a little halfling in a setting where it is appropriate." That's really what it's all about. When you are making your game and you are playing in a game you have to trust your game master to tell the story and adhere to whatever rules of consistency they are running with and if you're being a player you have to maintain that level of trust with the gm on your end too you're not going to go out and say that you know your ice wizard suddenly starts teleporting and throwing fireballs because you know you're going up against a a an ice drake and fireballs would make more sense. Um, there's not a whole lot more to do in this one. Player GM trust is crucial to every game. Most systems strip you of it by having really strict rules. Open Legends, Open Legend, there's no S at the end of it. Open Legend is the first system that I've seen that forces the player and the GM to tell the story at the same time. In Dungeons and Dragons, by and large, this isn't a a flat cross the board rule. It is mostly up to the DM to tell story, right? Um, if I bring a dwarven fighter, I just have to worry about my dwarven fighter. Dungeons and Dragons doesn't really reward me for helping other folks. I might get some more experience, but again, that's the the game master's purview. Um, in Open Legend, because of how Bane's and Boons and success with the twist and legend points and the level of, of GM and player trust that is required to run the game where everybody has fun is so much higher. Um, it, it, it takes a different level of play that we're not typically used to. And that's okay. Right? Trust in your players. Trust in your GM. Yeah, they may come to you with a really wacky idea that seems kind of overpowered or seems like it doesn't quite fit the setting. Sit down with them. If you're the player, say, hey, I really want to run a, a cyborg shooting guy in a fantasy game you know, with, with a rocket arm and a sword arm, and that sounds cool to me. 
as a GM go, hey, all right, man, that, that, doesn't, that doesn't really fit the story I'm looking for. Okay, so let's, let's talk this out. Right? You want to play Cyborg Man. There's not really Cyborg Man, Cyborg Man in my game. But what if there's a group of crazy wizards that are really into melding constructs with humanity? Like they think they've got this transmutation thing down. And they start making man-construct hybrids. Well, maybe that would work, right? Shooting arcane blasts out of one arm... Using a little plus uh, a magical longsword as your other arm, and you you take the uh, you know take some defensive feats, and suddenly your game is so much more different, and you've grown story because you trusted your player, because you trusted your GM, because you trust other players. Your game will become better. Remember that you are not the only person at your table. You are not the only one at your table looking to have fun. Everybody is looking to you, whether you are a player or a GM. There are other people at that table with you who are looking to you to make their gaming experience just as enjoyable as you're hoping to have. That's all I've got for today. This has been the Grumpy Grognard. Remember to like, subscribe, and share. And stay tuned for more Open Legend content. Thank you and have a great day.